The hammer has finally dropped, and after just 10 races, Nick DeVries' career as a full-time F1 driver is over. He's been given the boot from Alpha Tauri to bring back Daniel Ricciardo. Although many of his fans held on to hopes of Nick staying at least until the end of this year, Red Bull and Alpha Tauri once again proved that F1 can be a very cruel sport. Now, we've already discussed why this departure was inevitable in a previous video, but let's now look at where Nick goes from here by first addressing the elephant in the room. Nick is almost certainly never racing in F1 again. While the argument could be made that 10 races were just too little for Nick to showcase what he's capable of, it's also worth admitting that not once in these 10 races did he demonstrate that he had that something special that good F1 drivers have. There was no momentary flashes of brilliance or anything eye-catching about his driving that suggested that he had something special yet to be unlocked. He couldn't keep up with Yuki Tsunoda, who, let's be honest, wouldn't even crack the top 10 if the currently active F1 drivers were ranked based on their raw pace and talent. Nick doesn't bring anything else to the table either. With Max Verstappen dominating proceedings, F1 doesn't really need a second Dutch driver. Nick doesn't have deep pockets and no major sponsorship backing. Finally, at 28, he's neither young enough to be seen as a developmental driver, nor is he old or experienced enough in F1 to attract any attention. To put it simply, the F1 door is all but permanently shut now. So that brings us to the question, where will Nick de Vries go next, and could we see him return to Formula E? Well, Formula E would feel like the most readily available option for Nick. On paper, he's a great prospect. He's a former champion, and as far as Formula E is concerned, he has a good deal of experience while still having plenty of good years left in him. As such, teams should be lining up to hire him, but this hasn't been the reaction Nick has received so far. It seems Formula E teams will most likely be a little bit wary to hire Nick. The biggest reason will be Nick's present state of mind. Being booted unceremoniously from one of the most popular forms of motor racing isn't something a racing driver can just forget and move on from. Fellow racing driver and countryman Guido van der Gaard summed this up perfectly. I think it's especially sad for Nick. All I can say is I sympathise with him. I know the situation is very hard and very difficult. He's bound to take a hit from this mentally. Then there is the whole argument that his Formula E championship win during the 2020-21 season was a fluke. Although he's been adored and applauded around the world, many FE fans still see him as the weakest champion in the sport's history. The somewhat controversial qualifying format used during that season seemed to put Nick in favourable positions more than once. He won just twice, and the second of those wins came in the fifth race of the season. He finished on the podium just twice in the remaining 10 races. In fact, he would fail to score any points in six of those 10 races, despite getting the help of fan boost in every single one of them. With the likes of Eduardo Mortara, Jake Dennis, Mitch Evans and Robin Freins all taking points of each other, Combined with that fateful first lap during the final race of the season in Berlin, where all three of Nick's title rivals crashed out, it was almost as if Nick barely had to break a sweat to become the champion. The fact that he followed that up with a ninth place finish in the championship the very next season, while his teammate became the champion, drove the point home that Nick could very well have been really lucky. All this is subjective though, and at the end of the day, a champion is a champion. So, if he does come back to Formula E, which team will open its doors for him? Mercedes, his former team, is no longer competing. They were bought out by McLaren, who have a solid lineup consisting of Rene Rast and Jake Hughes, neither of whom will possibly be asked to make way for Nick. Maserati was the team that Nick was supposed to drive for this year, before the F1 opportunity came through. However, even that seems no longer an option. Maserati has two very great drivers in Mortara and Maximilian Gunter. Even if one of them were to leave, the team is expected to hire a young prospect like F2 champion Felipe Drogovic, who's already driven for the team in a practice session and will do so again in Rome. With recent news of Nick Cassidy's imminent move to Jaguar next season, we can only assume at the moment that Sam Bird would simply swap positions and fill in the open spot at Envision Racing, leaving no options for Debris at either of those teams. But after his most recent crash in Rome, which took a whopping six cars out of the race immediately, many fans are under the impression that this may be Bird's last season in Formula E. So Cassidy's vacated seat at Envision could now be an option for De Vries. And what about Avalanche Andretti? Is it possible he would team up with Jake Dennis if Andrea Lotterer decides it's time to move on after his sixth season in Formula E? That one is up for debate. 
None of the other teams have an obvious opening, with the only viable option at the moment being Nissan. Norman Nato's contract will come to an end this season, and Nissan don't seem like they will renew his contract. Nissan does present a different problem though. If Nick plans to take part in the World Endurance Racing as well, with Toyota, as he was originally supposed to, then Nissan might not be too keen on that, as Toyota is a rival brand. Although, they did let Sebastian Wemi do just that in the past. It's too soon to predict anything with certainty, as it might take a month or two for the driver market in Formula E to settle down, but driving for Nissan in Formula E with a possible dual program that allows him to race in WEC seems like his best option for now. The more pertinent question is if he should return to Formula E or even if he deserves to. It can't be great for a sport to accept a driver discarded by F1 after just 10 races with open arms. It would almost make it seem as if Formula E is not just on the level of Formula 1, a notion the sport has been trying to shake off since its inception. And all those questions that justify his release from F1 are also valid for FE. Like, what does he bring to the table that is special or unique? What if he continues to struggle, especially without the backing of a major player like Mercedes? Things won't be helped by the fact that even if we were to get an opportunity to drive in Formula E again, not everyone will be pleased with him coming back like this. Many in the paddock will look at him as if he was the prodigal son for whom Formula E wasn't good enough less than a year ago. This will put extra pressure on him to perform, which if he can pull it off would be the comeback of the decade, but given his track record, it's more likely that nothing good is going to come of any of this. That leaves IndyCar as the other viable option, which is where he should go to get back on track, no pun intended. He can find his mojo, possibly reinvent himself, and then maybe look at coming back to Formula E. It's safe to say that this must be a really difficult time for Nick, but he can find solace in the fact that he isn't the first driver to be rejected by Formula 1. Drivers like Danny Kvyat, Brendan Hartley, Alexander Rossi and many more suffered similar fates, but they all managed to find their own niche in the world of motorsports. Whether Nick can do the same, or if he'll have to look at alternative options such as becoming a test driver or broadcast official or very respectful professions, only time will tell. So where do you think he'll end up? Let us know in the comments down below, and if you like this video and want to help us grow our channel, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.